Okay, so some cleaning up to do from the previous video on password hashing. So let me delete what I had put at the top there so that our page can actually load. So what we want to do here is to encrypt our passwords. As you can see, our passwords are already in the database, but they are not hashed. So all we can do is we can create a small function that can run to change all the passwords here from that column. Okay, so let's change what we have so far and then we can change our code to make sure that any new uh, uh, users will be encrypted by default. Okay, so we have a, um, we can use our database uh, class in this case to create a very small um, uh, function here. So what I want to do is just to borrow what's here and ignore the rest. So what I want to do here is this is going to be some temporary uh, code which we are going to delete in the end. So I'm just going to say die at this point so that uh, it doesn't load the rest of this. I just want to use what's included there. So at this point, I know uh, there's a DB class from this one. So that's what I that's why I moved down here instead of up there so that I include this. So let's use our DB. So let me create an SQL here. I'm going to create an SQL and I'm going to say update. We're going to update uh, the users table. So let's go back to uh, the tables here and see what we're doing. So this is the users table as we can see there. And what the column we're looking for is password. And we want to change all the entries here. So we won't put a where clause. We are just going to tell it to change everything. We're going to change everything from here and save it back, okay? So to start with, I want us to read from, uh, from the database. Uh, yes, we want to read from the database. So before we update, let's say select from users. So we want to select everything. So our SQL will end right there. And then what I want is some results. So I'll say result is equal to. Uh, result is equal to. Now, if you want to avoid what I'm doing right now, you can simply delete all the uh, entries so far and start again uh, when we create the hashing algorithm so that it automatically does that for you. I'm only doing this because we already have some entries in the database that I want us to encrypt right now. So this is that's why this is temporarily uh, code. Once it does its work, we're going to delete it. So I'm going to use the DB class and I'm going to say uh, read, is it? Sorry, I'm uh, forgetting what I created. So anytime you forget what the methods are in these classes, uh, you can simply go back and check them out. So there's actually read and there's uh, save. So what I want is to read. So I'm going to say db read and SQL. Okay. Now I want to see the result. So I'm going to go through the result. I'm going to say for each result, because that's an array. Uh, I don't need the key. I just need the values. And each value is actually a row. So I'm going to name it right way. Okay. So for each is a looping mechanism that will loop through the result automatically. So now for each one, uh, we're going to update it. So we're going to say, since we don't need the SQL, we've already used it at this point, we can repurpose it. So SQL is equal to and create another SQL. So I'm going to say update users, that's the table. And then we'll say set uh, password is equal to, uh, let's create a hash. Let's put our inverted commas, two inverted commas like that. And then we're going to say limit one to make sure that it only uh, edits one row, but we have to tell it where to edit. So we're going to say where 
ID, we are going to use the ID is equal to. So we're going to create a variable called ID, like so. And also here we're going to uh, create a variable called password. So what we're saying is update the users table, set password will be equal to the new password and uh, where the ID is equal to the ID that we've provided. So we have our IDs here. So once we read from the database, we're going to have access to the IDs. So those are the ones we're going to use. So in this case, I'm going to say ID is equal to, so let's create those. Uh, ID will be equal to the ID inside the row. So we're going to put it like this, row ID, simple and straightforward. However, the password, we have to hash it as you have, uh, because this is the whole point. We're going to say is equal to row. Okay, same uh, password as before. However, instead, we are going to encrypt this one by using the hash function. So let's say hash, boom. The algorithm we're going to use is SHA1. Uh, so once you use this, this one, you have to be consistent. Once you choose one, use that same one all the time to be consistent, to avoid problems. So the data is the password. Once we hash it, we're going to get that. Now, one more thing to note is that make sure that you go to the structure of your database and make sure that the password column has enough uh, space to actually accommodate uh, depending on the algorithm you have chosen. So this one, I know it returns uh, 32, is it 40? 40, yeah. a length of 40. So our password here has a hundred which is way too much. So I can go here and change it back to something like 40 just for, uh, just to keep things simple so that I don't have too much space. But for the sake of this tutorial, uh, there's no need to do that. So I'm sure that the password will fit in there because if I put, let's say for example, I put a length of 10 here on this variable character. It means when I try to save, the password will be cut off to only 10 characters. So make sure you have enough here to actually save that. All right, so let's go back to our code and say SHA1 password, and then we get that, and then we can pass it there. Okay, and that's all we need to do. So now we're just going to copy this DB read, but instead we're going to uh, convert it to DB save because we are saving now. So just to recap a little bit what's happening here. Okay, let me go through that. So what we're doing is we are reading all uh, rows from the users table. And then once we get the result, we are going through one by one, one row at a time. And then what we are doing there is simply, uh, we are getting the ID to make sure that we are changing the correct uh, row. And then we are hashing our password and then we are putting it right back. So this should only be done once because if I repeat this process, it's going to be hashing what's already hashed inside the database, which will become a problem. So once I run this thing once, there's no room for mistakes. Okay, so let's give it a try and let me run it. Okay, so to confirm that everything has worked out, I'm going to go to my uh, And as you can see, nothing has actually happened. Uh, it hasn't changed my password. So why would that be if we ask? Okay, so what I can do is check. Usually what happens here is uh, I can go through my uh, SQL to see what's wrong with it. So we didn't get any errors. So I'm guessing it's the SQL. So all I'm going to do is say echo SQL at this point, echo, I've forgotten the E, and then we can comment this out, the save part so that we don't overwrite anything. So let me just see what's in there. And so the error which we have seen here is unidentified variable DB. So DB doesn't seem to be active at this point. So no worries, let's activate it. So we're going to say db is equal to new 
database. And uh, that should solve the problem. So let me see, let me reflect. Uh, okay, there we go. So now we say update. Uh, so as you can see, this is one, it ends here where it says limit one. So that's one uh, SQL, that's another one, and that's another one. So it seems uh, to, <coughs> excuse me, it seems to be working fine. So let's go back here and remove the echo and then let's do that. And then let me save, refresh. Okay, so we run it once, like I said, and let's refresh here to make sure that, uh, aha. Uh -huh. And as you can see now, the password is actually encrypted. Doesn't look like normal password. Okay, so this is well and good. Now let's try and uh, log in because we had, I remember my password here was one up to eight. So let's see if we can do that. Now be very careful, don't refresh the page because we're going to in encrypt twice so let me delete all this here up to the die part right there and save. Okay, so we are back to normal. There we go. Now, if I try to log in here, of course, this is not going to work because it's going to tell me wrong password, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, of course, wrong email or password. So what we need to do is go into our login and make sure that we are, uh, uh, we design this thing to automatically hash or rehash. So what we want to do is go to the classes of the login and add a method there that will hash the password. So let's open this login class. So there are a lot of uh, functions here, private, uh, but let's make a public function. We can make it right here. As long as it's inside here, that's fine. So we'll say public functions. It's public because we're going to be accessing it from outside the class. So we're going to say, uh, we can call it anything here. So we're going to say encrypt. Uh, it's not good to use because things like crypt are actually keywords like that. So we have to be, we have to find something that isn't a keyword. Um, we're going to say, hash, I'm, I'm struggling to get uh, something I can use. Mm. Or we're going to say hashed, hashed text, something like that. Okay, that would be the function or hash text, something like so, to make sure that we are not uh, interfering with the keyword, okay? So we are going to get the original text here, and then of course, we are going to return uh, the text after we deal with it, okay? So what we do, we're going to say uh, text, is equal to hash and the algo is sha oh no i don't even remember the algo that i used here which was sha one i think okay we'll test that one and see if that's the one all right so then the text and like so so we bring in the text we say text is equal to the hashed version of the same text and then we return the text. So the function is hash text like so. So let's go to our login page where, oh, actually this doesn't need to be a public function. It can be a private function since the login uh, process happens right here. So let's make it private like so. Okay, so that's the one hashed text. Let me copy that. So we can come here where we are checking if the password is equal to what's inside the row. So now we know that uh, inside the row there's a hashed version. So meaning we have to hash this one and check if it actually matches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say hashed version and carry that password out of there and put it in here. 
and just like that we've done it so if the hashed version is equal to what's inside the row then uh, we are good to go okay so let's go back and try this again so let me resend the data call to an identified function all right so what i forgot to do here because this function is inside this thing so i have to say this like this all right there we go back and voila we have managed to log in and now our passwords are actually hashed and everything is good all right so i hope you have learned something uh, through all this encryption process and i will see you in a later video where we do something a little bit more exciting all right see